Anthony Roberts, greeting you in the name of the Lord Jesus from the five gospel halls here in Tobago. We want to thank you for tuning in to our weekly telecast, Moments with Truth, and it is our prayer that as you view this program, that you will receive a blessing from the Lord. Those who are saved, we trust that you will be strengthening your faith and your walk with the Lord Jesus. Those who are not saved, it is our prayer that you will trust the Lord Jesus and be saved for time and for eternity. You can contact us by calling 796-0979 or 283-2222. At the close of the telecast, you'll see our various locations here in Tobago and the various meetings, and you are welcome to attend. May God richly bless you as you view this program. Have a great day. Praise the Lord once again. Nice again to be with you. And uh, today we are going to go into uh, mirrors. And um, it's a joy. I know you had a wonderful weekend, a holiday, and God had blessed us. And I'm sure you have received blessing too as well. So we're going to look to the Lord in prayer and go right into our message for today. It's an interesting message, mirrors. Look into the mirror. And uh, we will find out when we look into the mirror what we would see. Uh, so let's just pray and ask God's blessing upon this day's proceedings, upon your life and upon uh, the, the world, the, our nation. Ask God to bless. Let's give God thanks. Father and God, we are again thankful for your love and mercy. We are thankful, O oh God, to know that in all thy ways we can acknowledge thee and thou will direct our path. We are asking that you bless in a mighty way. We think, dear God, of many who are experiencing pain and difficulties. We ask that you'll meet their needs, touch them, O oh God, right where they are. We ask, Lord, that you'll give us wisdom from yourself, that we'll be able to live aright in these trying times. We think not only of ourselves here, but elsewhere in the wider world. Many who, Lord, through the night they have uh, received some sorrowful news, uh, bombing and various things that are happening. We are praying, Lord, that you, your peace will be with them. Bless us, Lord, as we go into thy word now. Help us as we do give thee thanks. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Yes, friends, amen. And as we are going to the word of God today, we're going to look into mirrors. Mirrors, look in the mirror. And I'm sure you have a mirror at home. You sometime through your lifetime, you have looked into a mirror. So we're going to be looking into the mirror. Look in the mirror. And what do you see? The mirror. Let's see what a mirror is. As uh, from the, the description, we are told that it's a looking glass. Any glass or polished substance that forms images and a reflection of rays of light. Reflection of rays of light. That which gives the true representation in which a true image is seen. True representation, a true image is seen. A further description, a surface area, but it is polished, polished metal or glass coated with a metal film that reflects light without diffusion and produces the image of the object placed in front of it. So in front of the mirror, it will reflect the object that is placed in front of it. That's a mirror. That's a mirror. You know, there's a fairy tale which tells us, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? But the thing about that is that you're the only one looking into the mirror, so it had to be you. But it's a fairy tale and you can know more about it when you hear the, the lesson concerning that. But we're looking into the mirror. You're looking into the mirror. We want to tell you from the offset that the word of God is likened unto a mirror. It's likened unto a mirror. When the, the word mirror is used in respect of a verb, we talk about a copying of something or someone. Copying. Duplicated. A representation of his idea. A copy of the idea. You have people who have mirrored ideas and you have people who have mirrored the work, works of individual documents. Today we call it, uh, in the technology, uh, world of technology, we call it cut and paste. That's mirroring, mirroring something that uh, is there, documents, they mirrored it, and these things are happening daily. But we go on, and we see that 
Uh, sometime in the past, the Prime Minister of uh, the ex, that's the ex Prime Minister of uh, Trinidad and Tobago, Basdeo Pande, once was accused of certain things. And he told them, look in the mirror, look in the mirror. And this uh, reflection is, who do you see? So sometimes we are accusing people, but we have to look into the mirror. So the mirror, from the offset, as I mentioned before, we want to let you know that the mirror, the mirror, the word of God is likened unto a mirror. And we see there from the word of God, which tells us in the book of James, chapter 1 and 23. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer of it, he is likened unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Verse 24. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. The mirror. The word of God likened unto a mirror. We look into it and we see what God is able to show us. If you see yourself and uh, you're seeing certain things and you don't make that correction, oh, you've got to be careful. But when you see what you need to correct, you correct it. And that's what mirror does. The word of God corrects. It corrects. It shows you who you are. And we're going to see that as we go along. In the book of Job, we are told here that Job uh, is stating chapter 37, verse 17, or 18, sorry. O Job, and this is God speaking to Job. O Job, stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. The wondrous works of God. And it goes on in verse 37. Does thou not know when God disposed them and caused the light and his clouds to shine? And it goes on, does thou now know that the balances or the balancings of the cloud, the wondrous works of him, which is perfect in knowledge. Verse 37, chapter 37, verse 18, has thou within him spread out the skies. This is uh, God telling Job, which is strong and a molten, like a molten looking glass. Spread out the skies like a molten looking glass. And he asks the question, can you spread out the skies like this, Job? Can you spread out the skies like this? A mirror reflecting what God, mercy, and love is. Can you cast them like a mirror? This is what the word of God tells us. And uh, in the book of Psalm 19, we read it time and time again. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show it forth his handiwork. A mirror showing forth what is in the hands of God, the handiwork. I remember one time I was in the countryside in, in Trinidad and, and here it is one night I went out and the stars, the, the whole sky were, were lit up with stars. I tell you it was an amazing sight. It was like if you can reach the, sky, uh, the stars with your hands, they were very low and an, a wonderful sight. Oh, mirroring the word of God, mirroring what God is able to do, the handiwork of God, the beauties of heaven, the beauties, mirroring forth the things that God is able to do. And it tells us there, again, as I mentioned, in the heaven declares the glory of God and the firmament showed forth his handiwork. Handiwork. And we go on. So we are looking at the mirrors. In the days of old, people would uh, use uh, different things for mirrors. They will polish a bronze uh, object to the point where it will shine. And they use that as an instrument, but they use that as a mirror. They would even go down to the sea or the waters, the still waters, and look into the waters and the reflection of the black waters will give them a reflection of themselves. They consider that a mirror. They consider that a mirror. And uh, this is what the people will do of old. But today, we have mirrors that we hold in our hands. We have mirrors that we set on the wall. We have mirrors that we put all around us. And um, we today use mirrors. But these mirrors that today are minded from the ground. They're made out of sand. They're made out of coral. They're made out of coal and all these things. And they are minded from the ground. And uh, they even in the times of old, the building of the tabernacle, the building of the tabernacle in Exodus 38 and 8, we read there, and he made the lava of brass and the foot of it 
of brass and a looking glass of the woman assembling which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. You can read about it and see why that mirror was placed there so that you can see yourself a reflection, a reflection. Yeah, so as we are mentioning in today's mirror is made out of things that are set forth in the earth. I think of a diamond, I think of a crystal, and a diamond with all its facets, all its beauty shining out, and all from God's creation on the earth. And these diamonds are very important. When you look into it, you can see all different dimensions. As you look into the mirror, you see the reflection. So we're looking at mirrors, and we're seeing there where the Word of God is likened onto a mirror. Mirrors are com uh, commonly used for personal grooming. You know, we stand in front of the mirror. Sometimes we take too long in front of the, uh, the ordinary mirror than we don't take more time in front of the mirror that we use than the mirror of the Word of God. We need to go into the Word of God and spend more time in the Word of God, the mirror, the Word of God. So the mirrors are used as instruments, instruments in days of old, instruments of war. They were told to put upon their, their, their staffs, the mirrors that will shine and glitter and will sort of dazzle the enemy. They will be confused. The light from the mirror. Oh, I tell you, that's wonderful to know that what mirrors can do. And it gives off a light. Mirror gives off a light. And this is why we can say that the word of God gives off light as well. Hear what it say, tells us in uh, John's Gospel, chapter 8 and 12. The Lord speaking again and saying unto them, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That mirror that will be able, the word of God will be able to shed forth in our hearts. The true light, the light that is from above. So there we go. And we see even in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 4, it tells us there, In whom the God of this world had blinded their minds of them which believed not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into them and shine into their hearts. And th this is it. The devil will want to blind you towards this light that comes forth from the mirror, the word of God. He doesn't want you to get that light and to see that light and to follow that light. Oh, my dear friend, the gospel is real and this is what we present the gospel to you. We go on. And again, we look at mirrors are important. So too is the word of God. As you have mirrors are important, so too is the word of God. Without it, we would not know who we are. You may be walking down the road and you don't even know yourself. But because of mirrors, you know who you are. And so it is with the word of God. When the word of God, you look into the word of God, you know who you are. God is able to show you who, I are, who you are. Sometimes some people, they look into the word of God and sinner, they see themselves unregenerated and they need salvation. So as the mirror will reflect what is who you are, so is the word of God. So mirrors are important. Mirrors are important. And we have to recognize that mirrors. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. And what do you see? You know, there's a famous advertisement which tells you that you can strip yourself, stand in front of the mirror, and uh, look into the mirror. And what do you see? Do you like what you see? What you see is what you get. Very important. What you see is what you get. When you look into the mirror, the responsibility, you see yourself and you're responsible for yourself. You are responsible for yourself. You have to give an account of your life when you stand before God. So that's why the mirror is there to show you who you are so that you can do something about it. God wants you to do something about it. Yes, my dear friend, mirrors are important. Mirrors are important. You see the ruined man heading to a lost eternity when you stand in front of the mirror. And here what the word of God tells us. As by one man sin entered into the world, death by sin, so death was passed upon all. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So you have to do something with that. You have to do something with that by repenting and asking the Lord to come into your heart and save you. Mirrors can reflect your surroundings. This is important too, your surroundings. So does the word of God telling you what is happening around you, both locally and internationally. You have to be alert of what is happening. When you look in the mirror, when you look in the word of God, you see what is happening around you. It can tell you. It can tell you of individuals who come into your life. 
the word of Psalms, the, the, the book of Psalms, the book of Proverbs, how you communicate with mankind. The mirror is able to show you all these things. So here what it is able to do, it is to show you your surroundings. There's a very important mirror in our car and it's called a review mirror. You look into the review mirror. Now without it, you can, you'll be breaking the law, but without it, we are in serious danger. If we don't use our mirror, review mirrors, we can be in serious danger. We may be pulling out from a car, and the car is piercing down upon us. But the review mirror is able to tell us what is behind, what is yet to come. So is the word of God. It is telling you what is yet to come. And hear what it says in 2 Peter. Oh, the mirror is, is reflecting what is yet to come, the Second Peter. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us was not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. His desire that all should come to repentance, it goes on to say, but the day of the Lord shall come. The day of the Lord will come. And as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens have passed away in a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat also, and the works of, the, of that therein shall be burnt up. Burnt up. Here's the mirror of God telling you what is yet to come, my dear friend. Seeing then that all these things should be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be? in all holy conversation and goodness, looking forward, and this is very good, looking forward for the hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to the promise, look for a new heavens. We look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. This is the mirror telling us that. Look into the mirror, my dear friend. Look into the mirror. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such a thing, be diligent. Be diligent that ye may be found in him, of him, in peace, without spot and blameless. Oh, the word of God, the mirror. Look into the mirror and see what it is saying. It's that, like that Mack truck coming behind you. You're not seeing what is in the Mack truck if you don't look in the mirror. And the Mack truck is piercing down upon you. The horn of life, it's blowing its horn. And here it is, the word of God is telling you, repent. Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. The day of the Lord is coming. And it's coming, and you can see this in the mirror from the word of God. Mirror can be used to detect certain things like people who uh, uh, go into groceries and pick up things, you know, steal and things like that. You have mirrors that can see where you can't see. When you're crossing the border in certain places in big countries, what they will do, they will take a mirror and put it below your car. What you can't see, they will be able to see with the, with, the, with the mirror. It reflects what is inside there. So you must be very careful. The word of God is like unto that. What we can't see in our lives, what we are not looking for, or what, what, what is, is hidden, the mirror is able to show what is in a man's heart in a man's life. So the reflection of the word of God, the reflection of the mirror, look into the mirror. Look into the mirror. God is warning us. Um, there is a, a fish which I'd like to tell you. It's called a fighter fish. I don't know the scientific name for it, but um, it's a nice interesting fish for you to know. It's, it's a fish that is very vicious. It will fight with all other fishes. It, it cannot live with other fishes. And what happens is that this fish is so, so ferocious that uh, it, it, it's gentle when it begins to, to, to do its, you know, have its young. And it's amazing to see how this fish uh, acts when it is about to, to, we call it spawn or have young ones. It will take the mother and put her below the nest. He will blow a nest and take the mother, put her below the nest, squeeze the eggs out of the mother, take the eggs and put it into the nest gentle he will run the mother from out of the nest and he will stay there with the young the eggs and when when the eggs fall he will gently pick up those eggs and put it back into the nest when the eggs hatched what he will do the young ones when they fall down from the nest he will take them up gently and put them back into the nest this is a fish that lives don't live with other fishes very ferocious and what happens is the minute those young ones start getting away from him he starts to eat them that's the time you have to remove him. Oh boy, it's amazing, you know? But the thing about it, why I'm telling you about this fish, is that when you put a mirror in front of this fish, it will fight 
even what they're seeing in the mirror. And what does that tell me concerning the word of God? It tells me that here it is, from whence come fighting, James chapter 4 and 1, from whence come fighting and wars and fighting among you, come that day not hence even of your lust, that ye war in your members, you're warring within yourself and your members, you come between your lust, and it goes on, James 4 and 2, ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight the wars, yet ye have not, because ye ask not, and ye fight among yourselves, and hear what it tells us in the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 15, ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one another, you see, when you look into the mirror, when that fish looks into the mirror, he see another fish, the same fish but he thinks he's another fish and he begins to fight and this is not my, like mankind when you look into the mirror that person you kill is a man like unto yourself thou shalt not kill and we devour one another we fight among ourselves we fight among and i told you the fight last time the fight was within the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary one to the other. So we fight and devour one of our, ourselves. And it goes on. And I'm coming down to the end. So here it is, mirrors. We are to look into the mirror. Look into the mirror. I went to Chicago once in the, the house of, of Moody, the house of prayer, the, the, the Moody Institute. And there was a, a prayer room. And in this room, there's a, a, a corridor. As you go through the corridor, the hallelujah chorus comes on. And then you go into a smaller room. And in there, you stand on a mirror. And from that mirror, you begin to see mirrors all around you. And the mirrors is placed in such a way you can see infinity. You look into the mirror and you're seeing yourself way down. You look up and you're seeing yourself way up. You look down at any direction you look, you're seeing infinity. So is the word of God, it tells us. For by grace I saved through faith and that not yourself. It tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Infinity. Infinity. And this is the mirror that we can look in the word of God. So we go on. We go on, and the man, as he looked into the mirror, he must see himself. A lost sinner. If you're not saved, you look into the mirror, you see yourself a lost sinner. And hear what the word of God says. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after death, the judgment. There's a judgment day coming, my dear friend, so you need to repent. You need to trust the Lord Jesus as your personal savior. Now, a preacher once preached a sermon. And this was a very big sermon. What he did, he brought a casket and put it in front of where he was preaching. An empty casket. And what he did, he put a mirror by where the head supposed to be. And a mirror that day. And he told the people, come, come and see your future. And as they come and they look into the casket, what do they see? They see themselves. My dear friend, don't wait until you're lying down in that casket to repent, to ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart. Do it now, my dear friend. Now is the day of salvation. As they look into the mirror, they see there themselves. And there it is. That was one of the most effective sermons that was able to bring man to the reality. It's appointed unto man once to die. That is coming. Repent. And after that, the judgment. So he's saying, look into the mirror. So we want you to look into the mirror of life, the word of God, and benefit thereby. So it goes on. For now we, we see through a glass, and I'm going to be quoting there from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. We see through the glass darkly. And it goes on in 1 Corinthians 13 and 13. And now abided faith, hope, and charity. But the greatest of this, or greatest of these is charity. Love. Love. God so loved the world that he gave. My dear friend, this is the love of God. You need to repent. You need to come to him. You need to receive Jesus as your personal savior. Now, in some places, there are two-way mirrors. And uh, some people can alter mirrors. Mirrors don't lie. Mirrors speak the truth. And uh, when you find some mirrors where you're going to it and you see a different shape of your body, no, that is being altered by man. But the word of God, you can't alter the word of God. It speaks the truth. Some people alter the word of God, yes, and try to fool people, but the word of God stands forever. It's truth. And the mirror is truth. When you look into the mirror, you see yourself. You look into the word of God, it's truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So this is what the mirror is able to show us. So we have the two-way mirrors. 
you can see from this end, but those on that end, they can't see you. And uh, this is what it is. Sometimes we don't know. We, can, we cannot see God with the natural eye. We cannot see Jesus with the natural eye. But he can see us. He's looking down upon us. That two-way mirror, he's looking down. And beyond that mirror, wherein we can't see, lies the beauty of God. The beauty of God, Revelation tells us there. And I saw a new heavens and a new earth. And the first heavens and first earth was passed away. And there was found no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And it goes on. As I told you before, mirrors reflect. And it goes on and shows a new heavens and a new earth. The, the Jerusalem, the new city, this is what we can't see which is beyond the two-way mirror, but is looking down, it's coming, it's coming. Praise the Lord, the Word of God tells us. We see it in the Word of God. We see it in the Word of God. So mirrors are important. Mirrors are important. Now I told you before that mirrors can be used in the form of a verb, wherein that we mirror certain things, we copy certain things. But hear what it says from the Word of God. In the respect of a mirror, Ephesians, uh, Philippians 2, let this mind be in you. For those believers, we live like Christ. Let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. And this is where God is calling us to live a life separated unto God, like unto Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith and we could live, we could mirror his life. And live a life that is pleasing to, to God, that men may be blessed thereby. So mirrors, mirrors are important. We are called to look into the mirror. My dear friend, look into the mirror. What do you see? Do you like what you see? And if you're seeing man a sinner, you need to repent. You need to ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and save you. So with these thoughts, I hope that it will bless your heart for his name's sake. Amen. Let's pray. Father and God, we are again thankful for your word. Lord, let us look into the mirror of life that we can see and know and follow thereafter. Bless us, dear God. Help the word of God to saturate the hearts, those who within the sound of our voices, that they will call thee blessed before it is too late. Touch hearts. Let them come to know you, whom to know is life eternal. We thank thee for the mirror of God, the word of God, the mirror of life, that we can say, yes, Lord, come into my heart and save me and can bring us from darkness into thy marvelous light. We do give thee thanks. We ask that you will bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Yeah.